going to walk on over to the other sulcatas and I want to show you the oldest sulcata that I actually have. You can see right here the shell. Look in there, guys. You can even see that the backbone is attached to the shell. That means that this is part of the tortoise's skeletal system. What's going on, everyone? Ken in here. I think I just scared Lumpy with my loud, booming voice. But I'm really excited because today we're going to be talking about Lumpy and giving you an update on him. But we're also going to be answering some questions uh, that I thought were really great this week. And I think there's some questions that a lot of beginning turtle keepers or tortoise keepers should know. Uh, they're commonly asked questions. And uh, I think we're going to be really uh, uh, informed, educated, and uh, hopefully entertained. I really don't know. Thank you to our core supporters who help make this show possible every week. Your support means all the world to us. This week, we'd like to give a special shout out to Kelly Murphy. Thank you for all you do. Anyhow, here's Lumpy, and uh, he is doing incredibly well. Right now, he's just in the shade because it's high noon. You can see the sun's blazing over there, but he came over into the shade. And I am extremely happy with the way things are going with Lumpy and his recovery from his ailment. He was severely dehydrated. We had, of course, put that feeding tube in there and I uh, was really aggressive in getting him back to normal and uh, treating him. And my goodness, Lumpy is looking great. And he's been moving all over the place. And one of the things I want to show you about Lumpy, because today's question actually has to do with the tortoise's shell. Now, let me see. I believe it was GG Barnett. I want to make sure I get that right, okay? I'm going to use my cheat sheet right here. Uh, but it was our friend uh, GG Barnett. I was right. There you go. She says, hey, Kenan, I see you patting and petting the tortoises on the shell. Can they feel that? Thanks. I love your videos. Well, thank you so much for being a Patreon supporter, and I really love that you asked this question because um, I love answering it because so many people don't realize that the shell is a living part of the tortoise or turtle, and they are really unique uh, animals in general. They're also very unique for the reptiles because they're the only reptiles with a shell, but yes, uh, Lumpy can in fact feel this. Now we're going to get into a little bit of shell anatomy in this video and to do that I have brought you my old friend Zeus. Now there's a story behind this big old shell. Let's put it right next to Lumpy. My goodness look at this. Lumpy and Zeus. Oh my gosh this is incredible. I remember when Lumpy was uh, only 90 pounds and Zeus Obviously, Zeus is no longer with us, uh, but Zeus was the big boy in the enclosure. But um, I had gone to Australia in 2008, and gosh, that's over 10 years ago now. Anyhow, I had gone there on a trip in 2008, and I came home, and my father had been watching the tortoises. And because, as you know, during breeding seasons, uh, the male sulcatas will battle each other, and those battles can get quite violent if the uh, other tortoise doesn't get away, and obviously Zeus lost the battle. Now, I want you to look at Lumpy's Guler projections. That's what that, that is called in tortoises. Uh, sulcatas have quite a pronounced uh, Guler projection in the males, and I would even say that Lumpy's are even more uh, projected than most males. Other tortoises that have uh, similar uh, projections are the Anifera or the Plowshare tortoise. Um, uh, those are, you know, very interesting tortoises. And the Bowspritz tortoise also has a uh, very pronounced Guler projection right there. Now, look at this guy. He had some pretty big ones. But what they'll do is they combat each other. And unfortunately for Zeus, I wasn't home to break up the fight. And Lumpy kind of got up in there and pulled away the skin that attaches to the shell. Let's have a look. See, the, you can see right here. Uh, the shell. Look in there, guys. You can even see that the backbone is attached to the shell. That means that this is part of the tortoise's skeletal system and it grows as the tortoise grows, okay? And if we look over here at Lumpy, you see the skin. Oops, sorry. The skin is attached 
to the shell. And once that's pulled down, that is a real problem for the tortoise. In fact, um, when I saw the injury here, it had already been a few days since I had got back from Australia when I had seen what happened. Uh, I, there were maggots in there and I could see into the animal's lungs. So it was really a traumatic injury. I tried to doctor him up, tried to clean it, but unfortunately I was unable to get this animal back to health and he did wind up dying from an infection. Um, I did then meet Sam Piscucci uh, a few years after that and Sam is the only person I know that was able to reattach the skin and he did it by drilling holes into the shell and suturing the skin back up through the shell which was really really a cool thing. Now back to the shell and back to the ability of this animal to feel. So the white here is obviously the bone portion of the shell. And then out here is keratin. It's made out of the same thing as our hair and fingernails. It's a protein and it's pretty powerful stuff to be perfectly honest when you look at it. Um, but you can see the bone underneath. Uh, this is part of the skeletal system as I mentioned. And what happens is when you do touch Lumpy, he feels it. Very similar to if you touch your fingernails. It's a little bit dull, but they can in fact feel through their shells. Their shell's a living thing. Their shell has blood vessels in it. So if the animal gets hurt, there's going to be bleeding. Oh, Lumpy is, uh, excuse me, that's Slinky making a racket over there. But yes, they can feel through their shells. Their shells will feel pain if the trauma is too great. So it's very important that you don't beat on your animals or hurt them or anything like that. Now, shells, also take quite a beating on tortoises, especially these guys that dig and burrow. Um, you can see a little bit of the pyramiding here, which started many, many years ago and has been smoothing out since I actually had the animal. Lumpy originally came from a friend in Long Island, New York, where he was being raised up in a glass aquarium tank. So nowadays though, thankfully, he's outside most of the time all of the time, unless there's a hurricane or cold weather, we lock him up. But uh, he's been growing since 2004 and you can see all that new growth is extremely smooth. So that's pretty cool. It's not such bad pyramiding. And of course, Zeus was raised up in Florida his whole life and he was a beautiful tortoise and it was really, really a shame. I was so sad uh, when Zeus passed away as he was just a gorgeous tortoise. Uh, so Lumpy is the culprit. Um, he did cause the injury that in fact killed our friend Zeus. So that was kind of a bummer. But um, Zeus remains as a great ambassador and learning uh, tool here for everyone out there on YouTube to learn about turtle and tortoise shells. As I mentioned, these animals are part of uh, the shell is part of the tortoise. So very important to note that you can see that backbone in there, which is why when you get this uh, really grotesque pyramiding, uh, you don't want that to happen because they'll get a saddle shape and it'll affect the way they walk because the backbone's under extreme stress. Okay, and the other thing you want to look at are the rings. Uh, some people have thought that you can count the rings of a turtle's shell or a tortoise's shell and guess how old they are. That is not an accurate way to do it. <clears throat> the reason being because they may throw off a few rings per year. If food is more plentiful, these tortoises are going to grow more rapidly. Okay, so they're going to grow quicker. So this is not a very accurate way to tell how old this animal was. Now, Zeus was actually 30 when he passed away, so he had a lot more living to do, and which is why we were so aggressive with the treatment on Lumpy to make sure that he lives way past his 20 years that he is currently. I want Lumpy to outlive me and to be an ambassador and a living time capsule for what I've done here at the camp, keeping these animals happy and healthy. Now, accidents do happen in the case of Zeus, uh, Battles between sulcata tortoises can become very dangerous for one or the other tortoise and they can inflict some serious injury. So uh, again, I want to stress that. Very important to have a large enclosure. But even still, what had happened was Lumpy got him kind of placed up right against a rock and just kept pushing and pushing and pushing and just was able to poke through the soft skin that they possess right in there. So that's what happened to Lumpy's, well, not really his friend, is he? Lumpy's uh, cage mate or enclosure mate, <clears throat> Zeus. So I'm gonna bring Zeus back up here. 
and we're going to move on and do a little bit more on today's video. Uh, I want to keep giving you guys some really fun stuff, some good information about the shells of tortoises. Um, we're going to walk on over to the other sulcatas, and I want to show you the oldest sulcata that I actually have. She's a female, and she came into the United States in 1977 as an adult. We're going to leave this tortoise shell right there, I think. There you go. Maybe I'll hang it somewhere eventually. But uh, anyhow, uh, this gal doesn't have a name, but she belonged to a well-known and respected herpetologist by the name of John Baylor. John Baylor was actually one of the curators of the Bronx Zoo's reptile program, of the reptile house. Um, so he was a renowned herpetologist. And this animal came to me because it needed a home as Mr. Baylor passed away and it was out in Santa Barbara and then that person couldn't care for it anymore. So it came back to me here on the East Coast and she's out right now. Here she is. So I don't really have a name for her, but she's a sweetheart of a tortoise uh, and she's not quite large. Now, sulcatas uh, from different areas of their range will have different max sizes. Now, females don't necessarily have to grow to be over 100 pounds. Um, so some of them, as you can see when I put my hand on her, some of them just grow to be, well, about 30 pounds she weighs. Uh, she produces eggs every year. And she was imported into the United States, as I said, in 1977 at this size. So how old is she really? Well, 42 years old in, 42 years in the United States right around, if my math is correct. And uh, she had to be at least 20 years old to reach this size. So she's potentially 62 years old, perhaps even more. Look at how smooth her shell is, but her shell also, we got another little gal coming over to say hello, but her shell also tells another story. Being that she was a wild caught individual, look at this, here's how they heal too. This is an old wound and the bone pops out. The old bone pops out and is replaced by new, by new bone underneath. Now look at this, this is an old wound guys that happened even before I got her. So you just pull it out and they'll get these divots. But look back here, look at her shell back here. Now she's not hurting or in any pain, but she does have some exposed bone shell right there. And this is just some old injury. I don't know if something got her or was nibbling on her, um, but I've had her now since 2012. Are you gonna get in the way of this video? My goodness, look at this one. This tortoise came to me from Alapata Flats. Uh, I got this tortoise in 2005. Um, but again, little injuries on the shell. They are outside all the time. Um, you get a very superficial white fungus, which does not hurt them, but they heal from the inside out, which is why in most cases, you don't want to cover a tortoise's shell because you'll lock in when they have an injury on the shell, you can lock in some of the uh, bacteria and it could cause more problems. So usually you let it air out uh, and keep it clean and let it air out because they, they heal from the inside out. So there you go. And look at these three, three gals came on over just to say hello and hear what I was talking about now. Number six here, that's her name, number six. She's got a beautiful shell as well. And all these tortoises have been outside here in Florida. Um, that's how I raised them up and their shells will have a natural eroding process. Here's some pyramiding here, but you can see it's been smoothed down from breeding and just from the ability to be out in the elements, things like that. So, okay, there you go. We've learned about the tortoise's shell, okay? It's part of them. They can feel. The outer uh, scoots are made of um, keratin. Oh, that's something we need to talk about, right? The scoots, each one of these segments are called scoots, and each scoot has a specific name. Uh, not each scoot, but each row of scoots has a specific name. Uh, you've got your, uh, let's see, we got your vertebrals, we got your marginals, we got your coastals, or is it coastals and marginals? I always forget that. Somebody correct me. I'm trying to go off memory here, but you can see here all the different segments and um, beautiful, beautiful creation nature did with the tortoise and turtle shell. All right, everybody, there you have it. My old gal right there. Some more gals hanging out with her. And of course, the only male left in here is Brutus. So hopefully we'll get our lumpy 
back in action, get him back into the colony, where I'm sure Brutus and him are going to have some battles, so I'll have to be on hand, because every time you separate males for a length of time and reintroduce them, you're going to have issues putting them back together. Okay, there you go. That's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I don't know. Leave a comment below. Don't forget to go on over to Patreon.com and help us to continue to make these fun videos, educational videos, and be a part of the Camp Kennan Army over there. Thank you so much, GG. I hope this answered your question. And I hope you guys are having a fantastic day wherever you are. Be good to your animals. I'll see you soon. All right, everybody. Bye-bye.